great day, great day, great day. This is Brother High Tip coming up to you live and direct. Yo, um, I, I kind of got to rush because I got to go and pick up these keys and get ready to roll out to Simple Count. Um, so let's get it. Proverbs and quotes just happen to be longer today. I've been taking, I took a little break so I get my rest in. Um, uh, I, I, I missed y'all, I missed, it, missed broadcasting, so um, like I said, I'm going to try to sneak some in every now and then while I'm up there, alright? So here we go. Um, day 39, I'm reading from Giami Journey Workbook, Tribal Quotes by myself, Hatim Giami. Um, those that's interested in getting a book, you get it at www.giamijourney.com, or you can just look me up on createspace.com, or you can look me up on Amazon, you know. Um, it's out there, you know what I'm saying, so if you want to follow along on a daily basis or come back after I finish all all 90 of them, you want to come back and you want to go through it yourself, take yourself through the process, by all means, feel free to, um, to get it and help yourself, alright, here we go, he who is silent is forgotten, he who does not advance, advances falls back, he who stops is overwhelmed, outdistanced, crushed, he who ceases to grow becomes smaller. He who leaves off gives up. The conditions of standing still is the beginning of the end. Henrik Frederick Amiel A good fight should be like a small play, but played seriously. When the opponent expands, I contract. When he contracts, I expand, and when there is an opportunity, I do not hit. It hits all by itself. Any technique, however worthy and desirable, becomes a disease when the mind is obsessed with it. Bruce Lee There is no cure for birth and death, save to enjoy the interval. George Santanyana. All right. I'm going to have to go with Bruce Lee on this one. A good fight should be like a small play, but played seriously. When an opponent expands, you contract. When he contracts, you expand. And when there is an opportunity, you do not have to hit. It will hit all by itself. Any technique however worthy and desirable becomes a disease when the mind is obsessed with it now for those that don't that don't first let me take a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes or whatever to explain the importance of Bruce Lee to to my generation um, I don't know whether I'm an XYZ or I might I'm I, I don't know um, well anyway I'm hip-hop and Bruce Lee came at a time when, when the world was in upheaval. People like Bruce Lee, um, you have musicians that were the same way. But the two major forces in my life at that point in time in my life was Muhammad Ali, Bruce Lee. What did these two individuals do? These two individuals basically broke the standard of what they were in and started developing from what was already there something better now those out there that know about hip hop that's hip hop they basically remixed martial arts you have people remixing music like parliament funkadelic and 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 you got you got the during this time it was a spirit of I'm going to do me and Bruce Lee in this is talking about a play. He's talking about conflict. And those of you that's been listening to any of my shows understand that conflict is one of is part of the definition of a warrior. We are in constant conflict. And he's saying when you're in conflict, it's like a small play. But you are serious when you are in it. And when your co-star expands. You contract. You allow them to do them. But when they contract, 
that's when you expand. So it's like now, you're not just playing with them, but you're playing with the ebb and the flow of the universe. You're in tune with something beyond your opponent. You have now become and expanded to something much bigger. And when we look at warriors of ancient times, the best ones were the ones that were able to ebb and flow with the spirit, ebb and flow with the universe. You, I mean, if you don't believe me, go back and read some of these ancient fighters, some of these ancient thinkers' um, re, um, writings so that you can understand that it's, it's about being in tune with something bigger than just your opponent. See, because when you're in a conflict, you're not just fighting your opponent. You understand what I'm saying? It's something bigger. You're fighting yourself. That's just, this person out here is an extension of yourself. This goes back to what, what I talk about in numbers and interdependence and cooperation and all. It's, it's understanding that it's not just, it's, it's bigger than just you and this other person. Y'all are one. So when you when you understand this and you are in tune with the universe, you don't even have an opponent. Your opponent don't even exist. It's you learning about yourself. It's you battling with yourself. So you learn how to get in tune with nature so that you can overcome your biggest obstacle. The one thing that's standing in your way. You. And the part that I like especially is and when there's an opportunity I do not hit it hits all by itself and and a lot of you out there that are, have ever been in the zone whether I'm talking see because I could relate it to sports whether it's on the football field on the basketball court or even some of you that are um, um, are in the academic arena when you are um, given a lecture or or you took a test that you have prepared for in a sense for your whole life and the stuff just happens you shoot that shot and nobody thinks that it's gonna go in and all of a sudden out the blue it goes in like a miracle you're running that ball or you're catching that pass that seems impossible nobody thought you could do it and even in some instances you might have even not even thought you weren't even thinking about it but you was able to do the impossible catch or make the impossible run or answer the impossible question because you was in the zone you didn't have to hit you didn't have to aim it the opportunity was there and because you prepared because you was ready you didn't hit it hit all by itself that's called being in the zone now last but not least any technique however worthy and desirable becomes a disease when the mind is obsessed with it now what this is talking about is the dogmas that we all fall into the mind states the beliefs the limiting beliefs that we all fall into and what Bruce Lee did was he took martial arts and he basically started extracting the best parts so that he could use it and develop his art. He really didn't even want to develop an art. And I think, I think if we look at some of the religious masters, they did some of the same thing. They took the best. They took they took out what was necessary and left the rest of the junk. But those that came behind them said, "Oh." We're going to erect this shrine of thought. We're going to erect this book and say that this individual came up with it when that's not what the individual wanted. Bruce Lee didn't really, he, want, he wanted to call his, he wanted, he wanted people to learn the best techniques. Not even the best techniques, he just wanted them to learn to fully express themselves. And you can see the same thing with Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali stripped boxing. He stripped it down. To where he was able to do what he was able to do, being smaller than everybody else in 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 the arena. He was moving in ways that other people his size was not moving in. He was doing things that other people didn't even think about. He went outside the regular technique. And many of us in our lives, we get caught up in these techniques. And these techniques become our downfall. They become a disease because we start using them over and over again. And we start thinking it's the technique when it's really us. But we give credit to the technique. We give credit to the master. We give credit to the teacher. 
We give credit to luck. When in fact, it's all about you. But yo, this is Brother Tim. I'm saying peace. And thank you for tuning in. And I am out.